So here are three different fish curry recipes. The first one is a Bengali style fish curry with mustard paste. The second one is a Kerala style fish curry made with coconut milk. And the third one is a Andhra style fish curry made with tangy gongura leaves. I'm using 500 grams of the sea fish pomfret. You can use any fish of your choice. We are going to start by coating the fish with salt and turmeric powder. Make sure to coat the fish evenly. Alright, let's set that aside. And now let's make a spice mix that is traditionally used extensively in Bengali cuisine. It's called Paach Poron and is made by combining equal quantities of five different spices. Cumin seeds, mustard seeds, black caraway seeds or kala jeera, fenugreek seeds or methi and fennel seeds. Mix well and store this in an airtight container and you can use it as and when you need it. Now let's make the mustard paste for the gravy. In a grinder jar add one and a half tablespoons of mustard seeds and an equal quantity of poppy seeds. Add half a teaspoon of salt and around three tablespoons of water. We want to grind this to a smooth paste, like that. The addition of poppy seeds tones down the intensity of the mustard seeds. But if you like the sharpness of mustard, add more. It's up to you. Okay, now let's take a look at the other ingredients. We need four tablespoons of good quality mustard oil. And try not to substitute this with normal cooking oil. Bengali mustard fish needs mustard oil. Okay, now we need half a teaspoon of that spice mix that we made. Three tablespoons of finely chopped onions. We usually add onions when we are cooking with sea fish to balance out the saltiness of it. You don't have to add it when you cook with freshwater fish. Next, we need three tablespoons of chopped tomatoes. 5 to 6 slit green chilies, 1 tablespoon of finely chopped coriander leaves, half a teaspoon of turmeric powder and salt to taste. Alright then, let's get started. Add 2 tablespoons of mustard oil to a pan set on medium heat. We are going to fry the fish uh, for approximately 2 to 3 minutes per side. The aroma of fish frying in mustard oil makes me so nostalgic. I remember when my mom used to fry fish in mustard oil, I used to run to the kitchen and start deep breathing exercises and I used to wait when I could get my hands on one fish fry. <laughs> okay then, when you're done frying on both sides, let's set that aside and now let's start making the gravy. Add another tablespoon of mustard oil to the same pan. To this, add paach poro. Once the seeds start to splutter, add in onions and fry till the onions turn slightly golden brown. It should take around 3 minutes or so. Next, add in the tomatoes and stir fry the tomatoes for approximately 2 minutes. Next, add in turmeric powder, slit green chilies and give that a quick stir. Add a pinch of salt and add around 1.5 cups of water. We are going to place the lid on and let that simmer for 5 minutes. Next, we are going to add that mustard poppy seed paste that we made. Stir that in well and then we are going to let the gravy boil and get a little thick. Now let's add in our fish pieces. Hey, consider pressing the like button if you are enjoying this recipe. Make sure that the fish pieces are nicely submerged in the gravy and check for salt. Ah, that tastes perfect. Now let the gravy boil for a few more minutes. Squeeze some lime juice if you wish. Garnish with the coriander leaves and now turn off the heat and add the last tablespoon of mustard oil for that extra kick. All done! This fish curry has such a deep flavor due to all the mustard and the mustard oil. Oh my goodness, I love it. I hope you do too. I'm using the bhetki fish, also called Asian sea bass or baramandi. We are going to start by coating the fish with some salt and turmeric powder. This step is optional though, so do it if you like.
All right, let's set that aside and let's take a look at the other ingredients. We need one medium sized onion finely chopped, one tablespoon of crushed ginger and garlic, 10 to 12 curry leaves, five slit green chilies, half a cup of fresh tomato puree, one can or 400 ml of coconut milk, three tablespoons of virgin coconut oil, one teaspoon of tamarind concentrate, half a teaspoon of mustard seeds, one fourth teaspoon of fenugreek or methi seeds, half a teaspoon of cumin seeds, half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, two teaspoons of coriander powder, two teaspoons of Kashmiri red chili powder, one teaspoon of powdered black pepper, and salt to taste. One important point is don't shake the can of the coconut milk. We want to separate the top creamier half from the bottom half of the coconut milk, which is usually a little more thinner. Now set both aside and let's get started. Let's set a pan on medium heat and add two tablespoons of the coconut oil. We'll use the last tablespoon of coconut oil later. Once the coconut oil has melted, we are ready to fry the fish. This step is absolutely optional. Most people put in raw fish directly inside the gravy, but I prefer to fry it just a tad bit, like one minute per side. When fresh fish is added to the gravy, it breaks really easily. It's very delicate. This little bit of frying is going to totally help it hold its shape. You can skip this step if you like, but I totally prefer it this way. Okay, all done. Now let's set that aside. To the same pan, add mustard seeds, fenugreek seeds or methi seeds, cumin seeds, curry leaves, slit green chilies, and give it a quick stir. Next, add in the onions and the crushed ginger and garlic. Sprinkle some salt. We want to stir fry this till the onions look translucent. It should take approximately three to four minutes, not more. Okay, next let's add in the tomato puree and we want to stir this until the mixture kind of dries up and starts to ooze out some oil. It should take around five minutes or so. Okay, looks good. Now let's add in turmeric powder, coriander powder, Kashmiri red chili powder, or normal red chili powder if you like it hotter, and black pepper powder. Now let's mix that quickly. Don't stir this too long, if not the spices will burn. And now add the thinner portion of the coconut milk, the bottom half of the can, remember? <laughs> it seems a little too thick. I'm going to thin out the gravy with half a cup of water. Now we are going to cover this and let this simmer on low heat for five minutes. Ah, this is already smelling so good, oh my goodness. Okay, now let's taste for salt and tartness. Add as much tamarind concentrate as you like. And it's time to add in the fish. Hey, are you enjoying the recipe so far? Then press that like button. <laughs> Okay, now let's bathe the fish with the thicker, creamier coconut milk. See, that's why I like adding it in the end because the gravy has this amazingly creamy texture. If you add it in the beginning, it all turns into coconut oil and it's not as creamy. I tested it. <laughs> okay, now let's place the lid on for just two minutes. My mouth is watering while editing this video. I think I'm going to make this again tomorrow. Okay, now let's end the show with adding one tablespoon of that remaining virgin coconut oil that we had. This makes the gravy silky smooth and glossy and wonderfully aromatic. 
and done. Let me share a secret. Eat this curry the day after you make it. It's going to be even more mind blowing. Let's prep the fish first. I'm using the bhetki fish that's also called baramandi or the Asian sea bass. After washing them nice and clean and patting them dry, we sprinkle with some salt and turmeric powder. Coat all the pieces well and then we'll repeat the same thing on the other side as well. Now let's set the fish aside and take a look at the other ingredients. I've used 200 grams of gongura leaves. I've removed all the stalks and cleaned them well. 200 grams will make your gravy pretty tart. If you don't like it so tart, use half the amount. Next, we need two finely chopped medium-sized onions, one tablespoon of crushed garlic, one teaspoon of crushed ginger, one tablespoon of chopped coriander leaves, 10 to 12 curry leaves, two dried red chilies, half a teaspoon of mustard seeds, half a teaspoon of cumin seeds, one fourth teaspoon of turmeric powder, one tablespoon of Kashmiri red chili powder, one teaspoon of normal red chili powder and salt to taste. Now we'll make a dry masala powder. To a grinder jar, add one tablespoon of coriander seeds, around 20 methi seeds or fenugreek seeds, one fourth teaspoon of black peppercorns, some whole garam masala, five green cardamoms, one star anise, two cinnamon sticks one inch long, and six to seven cloves. Grind everything to a super fine powder. I'm saying super fine because if it's not very fine, the methi seeds are going to taste bitter. All right, we are ready to cook. Add four tablespoons of sesame oil to a pan. You don't have to use sesame oil. You can also use normal oil if you wish. Also, you don't exactly need four tablespoons. You just need enough oil to coat the surface of your pan. Set the pan on medium high heat and place the fish pieces in. We want to only very slightly fry the fish so it holds its shape in the gravy. Over frying the fish would just dry it out. Mm, no. <laughs> One minute per side on medium high heat is more than enough. Okay, done. I'm going to take these out and we'll finish frying the rest. All done. Set that aside. Lower the heat of the pan and add another tablespoon of oil if needed. Next, add in cumin seeds, mustard seeds, wait till they start to splutter, add dried red chilies, breaking them makes the curry hotter. <laughs> add curry leaves, turmeric powder, turmeric powder directly added to oil will make your curry taste better. Give this a quick stir and then we're ready to add in the onions, crushed garlic and ginger. Sprinkle some salt so the onions cook faster. Mix in the ginger and garlic well and then stir fry this till the onions turn slightly brown. This should take around 5 minutes or so. Okay, time to put the gongura leaves in. Now we are going to place the lid on till the leaves wilt. It should just take a minute or so. Isn't it incredible how it changes color to brown? Keep stirring this for another 5 minutes till all the leaves uniformly turn brown. As you keep stirring, you'll start to feel that the leaves feel quite moist. And if you stir even further, they start to feel a lot stickier and like slimy kind of. At this point, you can add in the dry masala mix. Combine everything well and keep stirring till the leaves glide easily on the surface of the pan. It almost feels oily. It should take just a minute or so of stirring. Okay, we are ready to add in water. We are going to add in a little water at a time so it's easy to mix in the leaves and the water. The amount of water to add would depend on the kind of consistency of gravy you would like. I added a total of 2 cups of water so far. Now add in the Kashmiri red chilli powder and the normal red chilli powder and give everything a good mix. 
the gravy still feels a little thick to me, I'm going to add another half a cup of water. Yeah, this is the consistency I like. Now lower the heat and place the lid on. Let the gravy simmer for 5 minutes. If you're enjoying the recipe so far, give me a thumbs up. When you see a little bit oil floating on the surface of the gravy like that, you know that it is cooked perfectly. Now let's give this a taste. Check for salt. Gravy is so tart and so wonderful. Add salt as needed. And now add in the fish pieces. Fish cooks really quick. All we need to do is submerge it well in the gravy. Now place the lid on and cook for just two minutes. And it's going to be all done. Okay, I'm telling you, you should have steaming hot white rice ready to go. The last thing you want is to wait for the rice to cook after this delicious fish is done. <laughs> Let's garnish with some coriander leaves and all done. So the wake me up fish curry is ready. Super tangy, spicy and intensely flavorful. I hope you try this and let me know if it woke up your taste buds. Alright friends, that's all for today. If you are on any of these different social media sites, do follow me. And if you want written recipes, visit my blog. All the links are in the description. And if you haven't already, do visit my channel. And if you like the recipes, subscribe. I post exciting recipes every week. Alright then, see you next week. Bye-bye.